The second largest shipping company in the world, Maersk, just dropped a bombshell warning about the global economy. We're going to take a look at that as well as why this stock is down over 60% from its post-pandemic highs. And stick around to the very end to hear about how this could potentially impact your investment portfolio. So first of all, what is Maersk? This is a global shipping and logistics company primarily involved with transporting a lot of the stuff that you and I buy. We're going to start off here by looking at the stock and see what has happened here in terms of why it has dropped so much. Maersk was making headlines after this drop of about 17%. Now that might not seem like a huge drop, but keep in mind that the stock was already down 30% from the high of just the past year. If we go all the way back to the post pandemic high, that was back in January of 2022 at $18.40 a share. Since then, the stock is down north of 61%. This is the second largest shipping and logistics company in the world. This is not some speculative stock. Now, this was one of the best post pandemic plays out there in hindsight, just based on what ended up happening with people doing all kinds of purchasing as well as shipping costs around the globe skyrocketing. This was a huge benefit to Maersk and other shipping companies out there. Had you bought the stock at the pandemic low and somehow sold it right at the peak in 2022, that was a gain of nearly 400%. We're going to take a look here at some news coverage on their earnings report posted by BBC News, and this is also linked up in the description below. So first of all, I want to point out the title here. Rather gloom, Maersk cuts 10,000 jobs as shipping demand falls. Maersk already cut 6,500 rolls earlier this year as part of rigorous cost containment measures, but said more redundancies were needed. The firm, which transports goods for major retailers such as Nike, said profits had plunged by 92% in its most recent quarterly results. Okay, first of all, rigorous cost containment measures sounds pretty serious. Second of all, a 92% drop in their profits is astronomical. Based on both of these things, what we are seeing here is not ordinary. These are completely abnormal circumstances, and part of it can be attributed to this volatility in the global shipping market post-pandemic, but that's not the entire story here. At this point in time, Maersk's profits have dropped harder than Dogecoin, a meme coin. But let's dive into now what's actually causing this. The cost of shipping goods soared in the first year of COVID when lockdowns lifted and businesses began to resume trading increasing their orders for stock. Such high demand led to congestion and logistical problems at UK ports. There was also a shortage of shipping containers in Asia, which helped drive up inflation. More recently, however, high inflation and rising interest rates have curbed spending and dampened demand. So this right here is evidence that the efforts of the Federal Reserve to curb inflation through these unprecedented interest rate hikes are in fact working. The question becomes, have they gone too far? Maersk previously warned in August of a steeper decline in global demand for shipping containers by sea this year. The Danish company said in a trading update on Friday that there had been significant pressure on rates in the past few months. Our industry is facing a new normal with subdued demand, prices back in line with historical levels, and inflationary pressure on our cost base, said Maersk chief executive Vincent Clerk. Early on, Maersk was largely benefiting from the inflation that we were all experiencing, and a lot of it was surrounding shipping costs related to everybody trying to buy things at the same time, part of this big reopening. But that very antidote is now the poison, as they are now suffering the other side of this inflation where they're now having higher costs and subdued demand for shipping. Well, well, well. How the turntables. Also consider the fact that there was a shortage of global shipping containers as well as ships for moving these containers. And now as those new ships and new containers are coming online, the demand is significantly cooling. So that's why Maersk as well as other shipping and logistics companies are suffering right now. But what does this mean for the global economy and what was the particular warning that they had? This quarter was very much in line with our expectations, but also underline the really, really difficult challenges that we have ahead of us. And we will need to continue to take very strong, decisive and proactive measures on cost containment in order to protect our business. In this changed outlook, we need to really stay present and close to our customers. So while we have a lot of measures that we need to take in the short run to block and tackle on the challenges that we have here and now, 
Equally important is the commitment to the realization of our strategy. Russ Mould, an investment director at AJ Bell, said Maersk's latest results suggested the global economy is losing speed. If you want an economic bellwether, look no further than Maersk, as its status as one of the world's largest container shipping companies makes it a fair proxy for global growth, he said. Transportation demand will be strong if the economy is going well, but the opposite will apply if there are clouds on the horizon. I think this serves as a perfect example here of just how fast things can unravel. Not even two years ago, this was a hot stock trade that people made tons of money on. Now, people have potentially gotten burned, losing north of half of their investment. In fact, we just did a video the other day talking about why the stock market hasn't crashed, and we talked about what actually causes a recession. And the number one thing that's going to lead to a recession is consumers not spending money. Now, nobody has a crystal ball where they can tell for sure whether or not consumers are going to continue spending spending money going into the end of Q4 and beginning of 2024. But if people continue to, then the global machine can continue humming along. Sure, Maersk may still have to deal with some volatility in the shipping market, but they'll be able to figure those things out over time. The scary consideration, though, is if that global machine slows down and consumers aren't spending, and this is a slow holiday season. If consumers hold back in this holiday season and we have less spending than usual going into 2024, this will undoubtedly have a ripple effect across the entire global economy. The situation here doesn't just impact Maersk, it also impacts average people, as this is a serious warning about where we are potentially headed if things are slowing down at this rate. And if you are worried, now is the time to prepare. If you've thought about securing a secondary income stream, for example, maybe a side hustle, this would be the time to do that because a lot of the things we're looking at here that are concerning are going to be showing up in the beginning of 2024. So if you start preparing yourself today, then when everybody's getting laid off in 2024, you're already going to be in a much better situation yourself. And maybe spending doesn't drop and the economy keeps chugging along and we don't have a big economic crisis or recession. Well, in that case, then you'd have the benefit of multiple income streams and there's so many different things you can do with that. So if you're serious about getting started with your side hustle and creating another income stream, grab a copy of my book, From Side Hustle to Main Hustle to Millionaire. This is a step-by-step -step guide on how to launch your very own side hustle from the complete beginning where you're making very little money or no money at all to building this up to a substantial revenue stream. You can grab a copy in person at most Barnes & Noble locations. You can find it at libraries across the United States. It's also on Amazon, as well as an author narrated version on Audible. If you enjoyed this video, check out my video here on the EV electric vehicle bubble. You're definitely going to enjoy it. Make sure you subscribe and hit the bell, and I'll see you next time.